ASICs are the popular choice on any work-based or like larger work-based chain. Like, why did you or Quai make the choice for GPUs? We went back and forth between um, GPUs um, and ASICs and even CPUs at one point. Um, there, there were sort of a couple of requirements, um, you know, in terms of because we're a sort of a high throughput chain. One of the requirements was that whatever validation you're doing on a transaction, um, that hashing needs to be tight enough that you can do it on many, many transactions. Um, and that kind of eliminated things like RandomX. Um, because RandomX on a CPU, if I was to say, okay, I'm going to use that hash algorithm to also hash transactions, um, which you potentially want to do for various reasons, you're not going to be able to do 2,000 transactions fast enough Mm. uh, because maybe it's a millisecond or two milliseconds a hash, 2,000 transactions is suddenly two to four seconds trying to hit 10 second blocks. You can't take two to four seconds to hash all your transactions, like not possible. Um, so So immediately we were kind of like in the buckets of uh, GPU and ASIC. Um, and we were actually leaning towards sort of the ASIC side of this coin um, for a bit. Uh, you know, it's simpler. Um, it's technically more efficient from a finalization standpoint, at least statistically. Uh, but we talked to a bunch of people in the market and recently launched sort of proof of work coins with their experience in the marketplace. And what we heard is um, basically anything that's ASICable will be instantaneously FPGA able. What's um, FPGA able? So FPGA is kind of like the middle ground between a GPU and an ASIC. It stands for fully programmable gate array. Um, but effectively, before you have time to sort of spin silicon to make an application-specific integrated circuit, you can program into these FPGAs and make things that are potentially 10 or 100 times more efficient than a GPU. Um, and what that does is that means that if you were to sort of launch with an ASICable algorithm, uh, you, and you sort of develop this GPU miner community, the second that like there's actually real money under that, someone's going to create what they call a bitstream to an FPGA, which is going to let all the FPGAs mine this. And there's just going to be a handful of like six or seven miners that have these, and they're going to soak up the entirety of your supply. So you're going to kill sort of your organic mining community, and you're going to centralize a lot of your supply and sort of the network into these half a dozen people's hands. Um, and that's feedback we got from coins and miners. Like miners were like, if you do this, we're just going like, to fuck you. Yeah, gonna, basically. Like, take over your network. Yeah. So so then we're like, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't do ASICs. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and so then we started considering GPUs. And one of the things that made GPUs more interesting to us is just the sort of geostrategic uh, differentiation between the two. Uh, specifically, if we are successful creating a scalable proof of work chain, our expectation is at some point we'll be able to compete uh, with global currencies, at which point there'll be high incentive uh, for various governments and nation states to control uh, its distribution. And so the um, the thought process was that if you had a general purpose uh, piece of hardware that's needed to get into the system, that would be much harder to control than an application specific piece of hardware. And if there's one thing that you can still well control, it's uh, import and export at ports. So if you were an ASIC dependent network and a certain country wanted to ban those ASICs, it would be trivial for them to do it. Um, so from the geostrategic perspective, but also from the perspective of sort of early centralization, as well as um, dependency on ASIC producers and, and what that looks like, we thought it was a better idea to go with uh, general purpose hardware, yeah. GPUs. I mean, it makes it more democratic too, which is like what this is all about. It's not technically democratic. Well, not in the traditional sense, but like a lower barrier to entry. It's a lower barrier to entry, yeah. right? The More whole, distribution. The whole system of proof of work, right? It's um, it's economic voting, mm-hmm. right? Uh, which is a little bit different than person-based voting. Uh, but it's really the only good Sybil mechanism that exists that's decentralized, um, right? Because it doesn't require identity. Um, it creates this great property of immutability. Um, and that's really the power of proof of work and like why it can be used to come to consensus uh, and create immutable ledgers. So, yeah. Yeah, and we kind of, I don't want to say backed into, but like with the rise of ChatGPT AI, NVIDIA stocks going crazy, like the GPU narrative is everywhere, which has allowed us to kind of, along with Poem, get into this hash cash idea or energy money idea. Thank <laughs> you.